On today's episode, I want to talk about words, 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 to quote Hamlet. <laughs> Between my job as a microbiologist and my current pregnancy, I have discovered the fun world that is German vocabulary for these sciencey things of microbiology and anatomy. Sciencey things. <laughs> okay, I can English. Anyway, let's talk about it. Lieblings, I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. When I first moved to Germany, I had a job as a microbiologist. One of the hardest things to experience was relearning everything I had experienced in a new language to find new vocabulary for the same concepts. But while a lot of science vocabulary in English are Latin or Greek based, uh, a lot of German is mostly German. <laughs> I mean, of course, they also use Latin and Greek-based science-y science words, but in my experience, a lot of times for layman, in terms of like layman words, they do stick to German words for their day-to-day -day use. And now that I'm pregnant, I have had to learn even more new vocabulary. I'm sure a lot of you who watch my channel also watch Passport 2, who, and they're also expecting a baby, and um, they've had their own pregnancy video. However, they live in a part of Germany where more English is spoken, including their doctors. I do not have that luxury. <laughs> I live in a part of Germany where I know at least like two other Americans in my vicinity. And maybe there is an Australian woman in the next village over, but I have yet to meet her. And she's like the next door neighbor of my brother-in-law and I still haven't met her. <laughs> I mean, there's just not much use for English out here where I live. So I had to learn the German vocabulary when it comes to my health. Fortunately, my German is advanced enough, so it wasn't a problem, and whenever I have had questions, they were always answered, um, even though I've not always had the best of luck with doctors uh, in Germany, but my current gynecologist, or Frauenarzt, here she is amazing, and I think the world of her. Anyway, I wanted to list my favorite science-y terminology that I have learned through these combined experiences. So let's start with microbiology. Number one, environment. So, all right, we're going to have to do, do a little, a little like background on what, what we do in microbiology as in, in regards to a pharmaceutical setting, since that was the industry I was in for almost a decade. We are in charge of testing every aspect of the drug making process. I worked for companies that made pre-filled vials and syringes, and they cannot be sterilized. They have to remain sterile and clean from the first day well beyond having been administered to the patient. There cannot be any contamination. So micro is normally split up into two sides. You have environmental monitoring and product testing. So environmental monitoring or Umgebungsmonitoring, their tests, um, they test the rooms where the drugs are made and filled. You test the people that are in the rooms, the water, the oxygen, nitrogen, steam, whatever that could come in contact with the drug is monitor. Product testing is a series of tests to make sure that the product itself is not contaminated. And it's a very high stress job. And we're also the least popular <laughs> in the industry because all we do is spend money. Our department does nothing to make money for the company, but we do make sure of the integrity of the product so they can sell it to begin with. So <laughs> anyway, back to the word environment, um, gebum. Um is around, Gebung is area. It's very practical, isn't it? It's very nice. <laughs> that was a very long-winded one for number one. <laughs> number two, oxygen is Sauerstoff, <laughs> sour stuff. <laughs> number three, nitrogen, Stickstoff, sticky stuff. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> All right. Ironically, like I said, a lot of the vocabulary are English based or Latin based. Um, sometimes it just comes down to product uh, to pronunciation. One of the tests I, that I I've done everything. I've worked for two different companies and have worked in every step of the drug making process. Um, and at one point while I was doing product testing, I did what's called bacterial endotoxin testing or BET. And it would just be bacterial endotoxin testing <laughs> or microbial enumeration test or I guess microbial enumeration testing, MET. Anyways, this is the English side. Um, we've also had to do a lot of validation or validierung using different bacteria and fungus to ensure that our tests are compatible. 
were compatible with the product. And the names of the bacteria and fungus, it was the same across the board. It was all Latin based and it really just came down to pronunciation. My favorite was to work with the fungus Aspergillus brasiliensis. Um, of course, like in German, it would be like Aspergillus brasiliensis. I don't know. I'm, I'm a weird science nerd, guys. This is fine. <laughs> um, but I, one of the words that, that kind of really drove me to make this episode, it was not something that you would be able to like Google Translate. It's very specific in the industry. And that is for, for the words facility isolates. So when I was bringing up the whole bacterial and fungus, when you're validating a product for a specific test, there is a list of bacteria and fungus that every company has to test with. Um, it's industry standard, regardless of country. Um, but there is also a list of organisms that are specific to your building. Um, so, cause I, I've worked in the, one of the companies I worked for had three different microbiology sites in three different buildings. And two of them were in one town and one was somewhere else like far away. And it doesn't matter. Your building will have very specific microbes, and that's why these facility isolates are specific to your building. I'm not going to go into the process on how those organisms are chosen, because um, it, it takes like a year, and it's it's a lot. It's a, there's a lot that goes into it. But in English, it's called facility isolates, and in German, it's Hauskeime, house germs, which is what the Germans would use. <laughs> when they spoke English. There were, there were numerous times when the FDA would come visit our site in Germany, and I've had to watch my boss in slight horror say house germs to the FDA when explaining our processes, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of died inside a little bit. I did, after the, after the first time, um, I, you know, after the FDA was there, I would never do it in front of them, but I did take my boss aside, and I was like, yo, by the way, um, it's not house germs, it's facility isolates. Um, I mean, house germs isn't wrong in a literal sense, but like the FDA does not joke around. Like, um, yeah, they're, they're like, they're the most terrifying of all the, the government regulators that we get from all over the world. It's the FDA that's the most terrifying. So I thought, you know, just so you know, so you, you know, to make sure you look better that you're using the correct terminology. And you know, that was fine. Um, but yeah, anyway, micro micro blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, microbiology is fun. Um, like I said, I, I couldn't come up with any anymore at the moment. It's also been a while since I've done microbiology, but those are the ones that stuck out. But um, I also have a few that really stuck out in terms of anatomy. Um, we're only keeping this short because we're not gonna I, I can I can do a long episode with anatomy, but um, we're going to keep this short and simple. Um, but it has been interesting because uh, I like to talk about things, science and, and health and whatnot. And I like to explain things that are happening. And like I said, not just during pregnancy, but even during the Rona. Um, uh, and, and how, for example, some of my friends in the U.S., um, because where we live, the, you know, it, it only is recently that like it's, it's burning through us like wildfire. But for the last two years, our area has been relatively um, uh, safe from the Rona to the point where we have plenty of people that literally were saying that it doesn't exist at all. Like it's, it's, we've been pretty isolated. But I'm trying to explain my friends back in the States where that wasn't the case, <laughs> that it was happening. And, and, and in terms of long COVID and, and the different reactions to the virus they were, they were having and how it affected parts of their body. Um, I had to learn the German words for certain parts of anatomy and um, it was kind of hard because sometimes I couldn't remember them. And the, 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 the biggest one was number five, which is pancreas. <laughs> Bauchspeicheldrose. I, I had to remember that word. Well, I could never remember that word. because So one of my very close friends, she had gotten the Rona last year and it actually had affected her pancreas to the point where she started developing diabetes. Fortunately, after a year, her number started going down, but like it was, um, that was very, it was very scary. And also keeping an eye on her children to make sure that that didn't happen to them as well. Um, and in German, of course, you can call diabetes either diabetes or Zuckerkrankheit sugar sickness which is which is pretty cool i mean it's what they we called you know in english it was called like i don't know back in the 1700s <laughs> i only know that from the one episode of outlander where where claire was explaining to someone that they had the sugar sickness <laughs> yeah i'm a dork whatever 
Um, and sugar sickness is not a hard, it's not hard for me to remember it because it's, it's, it's so practical and exact. Um, but you can best believe I always have trouble remembering pancreas. Bauchspeicheldrose. This is why I have a script, guys. Like, because otherwise, if I have to do this um, without a script, I would still would remember this damn word. <laughs> Number six is nipple. And all right, all right, guys, hold on. All right, you, you may think this is like not suitable for work, but I just have to say it because the German word for it is Brustwart. Breastwort. <laughs> it's like the least sexy word ever. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Number seven is uterus, Gebärmutter. So Gebär is birth, Mutter is mother. That's very good, very practical. Number eight is cervix, Muttermund, mother mouth. German is fun, guys. It's a really fun language. <laughs> What about you? What do you think of these words? I mean, like I said, I, I like how a lot of the words in German are just so to the point. I mean, it helps in terms of learning the language because, you know, you get like Zuckerkrankheit or Postwort. <laughs> like, that makes sense. I can remember that. <laughs> Except for pancreas. Dag nabbit. I will never remember the word for pancreas, but, you know, whatever. Um, what other German words can you think of? Let me know in the comments below. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you'd like to see on this channel. If you want more info on my books or newsletter, you can check them out in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And that's it. Until next time, adieu!